Hi, friends. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today, we have Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Of course. So we're going to talk about angels today and connecting with them. And that's so interesting to me. I was actually going to go buy um, a book because I are there are spe specific angels for specific things. That's kind of what I was wanting to get a book about. Do you pray to certain ones for certain reasons? So that's actually not the approach I take, although... I don't judge it in either way. Right, yeah. But for the the work that I do is actually helping people to connect with their personal team. So whether you call them spirit guides or angels or whatever, it doesn't really matter. But we have these the team of master souls who are here just for us to help and guide us to help us to live our purpose and fulfill what we came to do. Which includes, you know, we're here to learn and grow in this lifetime. So you do hear those terms, spirit guides, angels, guardian angels, like, is it just too many labels? Is it better just to us, for us to just think there's a team of people up there or, or <laughs> things or, I don't even know, what do you call them? There's a team of guides. guides. Yeah. It's really whatever term works for you. And I do think we tend to make these things very complicated, but at the essence, spirituality is really simple right? So whatever term resonates for you, a lot of times I just call them my guidance is really what I use. But on my YouTube channel, I might call them guides and angels because that's kind of the more recognized terms, right? But right. the only difference between us and these souls is that they have mastered planet earth. They've kind of graduated from this earth school, but they're still learning and growing from the opportunity to help us and guide us in this lifetime. Oh my gosh. I Okay. So I found you because I had a really bad day one day and I came home and I wasn't, wouldn't say I was meditating. I was trying to meditate, kind of praying at the same time. And I just felt lost. I just felt really lost. Mm -hmm. And I was praying to the angels and just saying, you know, show me some guidance. I need help. I need to be guided. And I had goosebumps the entire rest of the day all over. And I thought, am I catching something? Do I have a fever? I didn't feel cold. I didn't, I wasn't sick. And I was like Googling, is it a sign? You know, what does it mean if you have goosebumps after, after praying? And, and I came to one of your videos. <laughs> so can you explain that please? What yeah. in the world that was freaking me out? Yeah, that's, that's great that you found the information that you needed. Yeah. Yeah. So because our guides or angels have that higher vibration of energy, because they're, they've mastered their energy more, they're kind of at a higher frequency, you might say. So when they're wanting to really reach out and support us, give us reassurance or confirmation that you're on the right track, you'll kind of feel that extra charge of energy to your nervous system as chills, tingling, goosebumps. And that's really a confirmation that you're on the right track. Um, sometimes it's a sign to pay attention, but it's like that extra sort of, I love that feeling chills because it's a tangible way to recognize that your angels are around. And it's also reassuring because only those high souls can give you a feeling of chills. It's, I have a lot of people that find my YouTube channel that are kind of concerned about, am I going to start connecting with something negative mm -hmm. or, you know, when they connect with spirit, but when you feel those chills, it's always the high souls confirming that you're on the right track. Well, I was feeling lost. So I, I just had more of a confirmation, like, we heard you. That's what I felt like. Yes. Like we're here, we're around, we heard you, but that was it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, I still need I guidance. It, please. It, I mean, it can be different things at different times. I would say in that situation, it was really them reaching out to you and saying, Hey, we're here to help. You're not alone. Yeah. I, it was amazing. It scared me a little bit, not scared, interested me, spooked me a little. And that's why I started. I was like, Google, Google, found you. And I was like, okay, there's more to this then. So clearly I made some kind of connection yeah. when you are praying or talking to your spirit team and answers pop in. How do you know that the answer is not just your imagination? You're not making something up in your head as an answer. How do you know that it's them? 
That's the most common question I get asked. <laughs> I think it's it's challenging at first because our society is more intellectual, right? We're not, so we actually have two parts to our nature. We have our intellectual nature, which is the thinking, logical mind. And then we also have our feeling nature, which is really more that soul part. It's what some people call your intuition or your sensitivity or your feelings, your psychic abilities. And so we have both of those parts, but because planet earth has become overly intellectual and we go to school for so long to develop our intellect, mm -hmm. right, um, we, we become more used to operating from the head. So when you start connecting or using your intuition, the intellect just feels a little bit threatened, like, hang on a minute, <laughs> I'm used to being in control. Yeah. But when you're actually in balance as a soul, your flow will move in the order of feel, think, act. So the feeling inspiration is really where the power lies. And so that can be, it can come in different ways because we actually have four different spiritual abilities, which in a nutshell is the inner voice inner pictures, inner knowing, and inner feelings, right? So it might be an idea pops in your mind or a word just comes out of nowhere or you hear your name called and there's no one there or you get a picture or a dream, right? So we're, we're all getting all of these hunches and impressions all the time. But again, because most people are used to operating from logic, they say, well, that's not right or that I see. doesn't right and so we're so used to talking ourselves out of it and I think it's a lot of messages that we get when we're young as well I remember if I told my parents that I felt a monster under the bed right which is just a child's way of describing it yeah would say oh that you're just making it up that's not real mm -hmm. and so we start to discount our own sure. activity so so to come back to your question, right, it's learning to make the distinction between what is coming from that more intuitive spiritual communication, which is how our angels communicate to us. So they're just really sending us energy and we interpret it through those um, four intuitive gifts. When you're thinking, there's more effort involved, right? It requires analyzing. But when the messages of spirit come in, they'll literally just feel like they're just popping in your mind. Okay. And with more practice it becomes more distinctive. You can tell the difference by how it feels or how it sounds or, but at first when we're all like analyzing and dissecting that that's not as obvious, but it does come with practice and a little bit of trust is always a part of the process. Yeah. When you say practice, do you mean like just sitting quietly with yourself or do you mean meditating? Like, um, what do you mean when you say practice? <laughs> yeah, so I have a, a course called the Communicate with Angels course, and I teach people. And by the way, I got all of the techniques that I share, I learned through an organization called the Way Showers College. So I do recommend people look that up. Oh, um, wow. But you, yeah, but you can um, learn to just practice. Uh, yeah, practice getting those impressions, practice receiving a, a word or a phrase from your guides or having a daydream and seeing what message comes through that way. And so that's really what I mean by practice. Okay. And for me, and I think this is the same with a lot of my clients, the more that we just practice these techniques, you start to recognize that you're actually getting hunches and impressions at random times during the day. Um, and you just, instead of not noticing them or talking yourself out of it, right. It's learning to pay attention and acknowledge them because like we're receiving hundreds of impressions every day from our angels. And a lot of it is just like helping us to be in the right place at the right time and follow through. So before you went to that way showers college, when did you start realizing that you had gifts or you were experiencing things like what when did that happen for you yeah so funnily enough I wasn't really recognizing any of it was happening to me because I was about 12 years old when my mother was really searching for something to help finding answers for life and spirituality etc and so 
she kind of came across this organization that's now called the Way Showers College. And she started telling me some things about, hey, did you know you have angels? Do you know you have intuition? And at first that just sounded really strange to me. Like I didn't know what she was talking about. Right. And one day she offered, hey, do you want to have this session? Will you learn a little bit more about this and yourself? And I think I was curious enough to go along with that, but I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. But I remember that day I was taught a technique to ask my angels a question and get an answer. And I had an experience that I would now describe as a spiritual awakening where I remember I was standing in the room and I could see the table and chairs in front of me, but I could also kind of up above see all this energy and spirit and feel like, wow, both of these worlds are just as real as the other, right? Mm. The spirit is just as real as the material world. And that kind of set me on a course of wanting to learn more. But I think the key to that for me was that I experienced it for myself. And that's what I always tell people is don't just believe me or anybody else telling you things. It's really about what, what have you experienced? Yeah. Yeah. Opening yourself up a little bit more to the yeah. possibility and in, instead yeah. of closing off. But I think everybody has experiences when they're really little. I remember being four years old and literally feeling like I was flying off the floor or seeing like what I called fairies in the room. Some people have imaginary friends. Um, so we're all naturally psychic and gifted. Mm -hmm. It's just that over time we start, you know, letting the intellect run the show or just don't really get the chance to learn how to develop that part of ourselves. Right. Do you feel like um, when you say practice, the, the more you practice, the the more things happen or you're, yeah, you become and, and, more and more aware of it. So you really notice it a lot more all the time. Yes, for sure. And I still have days where I'm not really noticing stuff. I mean, it's not like I'm having yeah. psychic experiences all day long, but I, one of the things I teach too is a technique called spiritual cleansing. And it's a way to kind of get yourself out of that more stuck in the mind, overthinking, feeling pressured and come back to being in your true feelings, being more kind of in your sensitivity. Um, so that really helps is that the more that you cleanse, the more that you'll realize, Hey, I am picking things up. I'm tuned in, etc. Can you see your spirit team? Can you see them? So I have had experiences where I've seen them, but it's certainly not an everyday experience. Uh, there's been maybe two or three times where I saw, it was like a big ball of very bright light. Um, one time it was just like flashing across the room. And then another experience was really interesting. My son is about to turn 11, but when he was like a newborn and I was changing his diaper of all things, <laughs> I could see, got chills on my leg as I said that, um, <laughs> I could see like this kind of di um, diamond shape of blue and like white on the outside and blue in the middle, just kind of around him, maybe one of his angels. Oh. Um, yeah. So, but that's, not how they're going to be working with us all the time. I feel like maybe that's when we really need a little extra confirmation or a sign or something, but most of the time it's going to be listening to our own inner guidance, um, which is more subtle. It's not, they don't like bash us over the head. They just give us these little suggestions and ideas, but they respect our free will. Mm -hmm. right? So if you don't pay attention, that's fine. <laughs> A lot of times yeah. they're persistent though, but never, <laughs> never Is tell that also um, through other people? Like if you're like, oh, I just don't know if I should take that job or whatever. And then you talk to somebody and they say, oh, I wish I could do this for a living. And it's, I mean, <laughs> is it like the coincidence synchronicity stuff? Do angels, up, are they puppet masters up there? <laughs> they can be, yeah, for sure. Like there's often times where maybe I have a block or I'm resistant about something. So for my guides to just tell me directly, I'm just not even going to be able to pick it up. Right. And that happens to all of us. So sometimes it'll be through somebody else or signs, you know, yeah. I, I actually went to a workshop on the weekend and I've been 
um, recovering from a broken ankle, as you know, getting much better. Right. I can walk now um, with a limp, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> and two people that have been good friends of mine for a long time are very much on the spiritual journey. They both independently of each other, they had no idea they said it, said, do you think this um, recovering from this ankle is preparing you for something in the future? And it's not a question would ever have occurred to me to ask or to consider, but the fact that those two people both, yeah. I feel like we're picking it up from guidance and just said it to me because they're in a place where they trust their intuition. So they just share whatever they're picking up. Right. It was wow. like, oh, okay, now I'm going to pay attention to this. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or just maybe that you needed more downtime than you realized. And it was yeah. their way of slowing you down and just, you need to sit put for a little bit. Um, are yeah. your guides ever your your passed on loved ones? Do they ever play a part in that? So it's just not the same kind of relationship as it is with your guides. So with your personal team of guides, you've kind of attracted them before you were born because they've mastered the lessons that you've come to learn. And so they're not going to be loved ones who you've known in this lifetime, but I do feel like we can, our loved ones can come visit and connect, but they're not really our helpers in that way okay. because they probably still are on their own growth journey. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, do you see auras around people? Yeah, it's, seeing auras is actually not that difficult to do, believe it or not. But I, I want to much... learn how. I don't know. I don't... <laughs> but like, can you see an aura around me? Do you see anything around me at all? Or so with seeing auras, it's much easier to do it in front of a white background. So where I am is very bad for it. But yours is pr okay. So what happens is, um, and people may even be able to see it over the video as they're watching this. Um, you start to kind of see like a white light around close to the head and then mm -hmm. as you start looking most of our energy is around our head and shoulders and so as you kind of just stare and hold your gaze at the same place it will start to grow and expand oh. so what I'm starting to see is green like around your left shoulder my right mm -hmm. and it's actually expanding a little bit what does that mean yeah. what's green so green is often about growth abundance expansion Getting fat? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sometimes I, when you're seeing auras, you'll even see the outline of like faces, which is people's guides as well. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So if you wanted to be on this path, if you're just starting out and open to it and all that, do you need to go to a college? Is it something that you can just learn on your own? Yeah, I mean, we can all, we are all have these abilities. And so people can certainly do it on their own. It's not like, you know, you have to, but mm -hmm. the courses that I teach just, you know, most people don't know how to access this. It seems right. like out of reach, you know, and a lot of the people that come to me say, hey, I've been getting these signs, like maybe they see the number sequences, like 111 is the mm -hmm. common one or they're getting other signs and they, they can feel that their guides are around them, but they don't know actually how to communicate. So what I teach is just really simple, practical tools so that you can start, you know, having a conversation, learning how spirit communicates with you so you can recognize it. Oh, that's awesome. I've had people that learned just that first course um, like 15 or more years ago and are telling me, Hey, I still use these techniques every day because once you've learned it and you can start practicing, you really can ask your angels any question as long as it's your business to know. So they're always going to give you their support and their opinions about things. So for me, that helps me in making decisions and knowing if this is a good idea for me or not in my best interest Right. And so I always feel empowered to be able to navigate my own life. I'm not self-doubt still comes up for sure. We sure. all have our fears yep. and our stuff. But then when the self-doubt does come up, you have that tool to be able to say, hey, guidance, is this in my best interest? Is the timing right for me? And be able to kind of be on your aligned path, what you're here to do. And that's different for everybody. You know? Right. Right. What is your tattoo? 
<laughs> I notice in the shirt it's very visible. Um, so my so I'm from New Zealand originally, and so I got this about a year and a half ago. And it's um, so the silver fern is sort of the national symbol in a way, and then the other side is like the Maori koru. So the Maori is the indigenous people of New Zealand. So, okay, yeah, it's really it's neat. Uh, mm -hmm. so you have the one son. How many children do you have? Just one, yeah. Okay. Is he spiritual or into all of the <laughs> angel things? Or is he like, okay, mom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he has been exposed to this all of his life, right? So for him, it's just very normal. <laughs> no big deal. Right. And we do talk about it. I just try not to shove it down his throat, right? Right. But every year um, we go to a conference um, in Iowa with the Way Show is College. And the kids mostly just play like it's not that they have to go to classes or anything, but they're immersed in this energy and these conversations. And so the main thing that I want to help him with is to know that he has a unique path and the way to find that is to say, what is it that you really want? Because that was something that my parents didn't really teach me. And yeah. there's so much pressure from teachers he's about to start middle school right and we right. had to choose are you going to do honors classes and all this and there's so much pressure, pressure. from the teachers yeah. to go on a certain path and so I want him to know you know you have your own answers inside of you you know yeah yeah that's good to trust your own gut and your own instincts I saw one of your reels or shorts or whatever you want to call them and you were talking about the importance of community and I think that that was, I haven't gone lately, but growing up Catholic, you know, we had to go to church. That was just, we went to church. And um, I, the part that I loved the most was just being there with everyone and singing and just having that feeling of commonality, just the bonding of everybody coming together in this building and mm -hmm. singing together. And you could feel the raised vibration. People may not call it that, but that's it's a feeling. It's just that feeling of goodness and wholeness and community. And I always loved that. And I, so when you said that you were really big on community, I think it is so important to find your people, find your yeah. soul tribe, find the people that you can be you around and talk freely about all of that angel stuff. And the more that you do, the more people you you all of a sudden they're like oh you believe in that too oh I I, yes. just, I just watched a video on that or read a book about that and that's such a good feeling because it's like okay it's not just me there's more people around people just don't talk about it as much yeah when I first started doing this work I would do a, a workshop and people would come up to me at the end and say hey Melissa can I tell you something I say sure I've never told anybody this but and then they would tell me a story about maybe they saw their deceased grandmother come visit them or some very mystical experience. And this happened over and over again that everybody was saying, I've never told anybody this before. I was like, <laughs> well, it would be great if they were actually all telling each other. Right. <laughs> you know, so we would know that these things are more normal. Um, I have a lot of clients that say, you know, everybody around me thinks I'm crazy for thinking this way. So I think that you know, everybody's on their own path and there's no right or wrong, mm -hmm. but being around like-minded people is for me just is such a healing mm -hmm. because I know I don't have to filter my words or, and a lot of my close friends are, we're really on a growth path, right? Every experience is a learning opportunity. And so that's kind of what we talk about most yeah. of the time. <laughs> yeah, no, that's wonderful. I love mm -hmm. that. So tell people how they can find you if they're seeking guidance and, and if they're like me and they just want to know more about all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So my website is communicatewithangels.com. And I also have a YouTube channel, which is under my name, Melissa Kitto, which is K-I-T-T-O. And uh, yeah, so, and the other thing is I have a free um, training where you can learn to hear a message from your angels. So that's a great place to start if people are new to this or they want to start practicing. Um, so that is on my main website, but the direct link is communicatewithangels.com and then forward slash hear your angels. Oh, that's awesome. I'll put all that in the show notes too. Um, yeah. Have you ever thought of writing a book? 
I have thought of writing a book and that's another sign. People keep saying that to me. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I am yeah. a huge reader and sometimes for people that are a little closeted or, you know, they can't talk about it with their family and stuff, you know, you can read a book by yourself or listen to the audio of it and yes. get your fix that way. It's not as easy for some people if they believe differently than their families or friends. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the way that you word things is very, it makes it very um, easy to, to chew on. So mm -hmm. I think it would be a good idea. I, I think you should write a book. <laughs> You're not the first person to say that to me. So I'm going to take that as a sign from the angels. <laughs> Get on it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to be on here. I, I really was looking forward to this so much because I just think the whole topic is so interesting, but I did feel like I needed a little guidance on where to start, you know, and um, yeah, I, I appreciate your time so much. So thank you. Yeah, and maybe you're you can so come welcome. back again. Maybe we can talk about it again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I would be happy to. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Melissa. We'll talk soon. Thanks. All right. Bye bye.